very lucky that Ken's agreed to talk about his Ball War collection uh, for me and to show us a few of his favourite pieces that, that carry an interesting story. So, could you tell us how you became interested in the Ball War, Kenneth? Yes. Um, many years ago, when the last enlightened head of BBC television was alive, I mean, you will. Uh, he, he thought very highly of me as an actor, which I was entirely. And uh, so we spent quite a lot of time together. And he, one day, he got to know my various obsessions in life, which are very serious obsessions, Ireland being the most uh, notorious. I want to see the murdering English of that island once and for all. And of course, not many uh, British people can see what is so seeable. He asked me, he said, Kenneth, would you make a film for us, us being the BBC, on one of your enthusiasms? That's the word he used. And I said no three times um, over a period because uh, I said I'm not a filmmaker, I'm a film actor, I'm not a writer. And uh, he eventually brought in a living witness, uh, David Attenborough, who then was head of BBC too, and they both said, though Hugh Weldon was my man, one of the best men I've ever met in my life. He said, Kenneth, we'll pay you to try. You can go anywhere you like in the world, do what you like, we won't interfere. They were very enlightened days. Now, they are a creepy lot. BBC television. Really creepy. Oh. Anyway. Uh, in the end, I considered this extraordinary offer, and I had a friend from my childhood and uh, in the Air Force in the war, we were contemporaries, and uh, he lived in South Africa in a place called Ladysmith, the site of a very famous military siege. So I accepted um, rather naughtily and didn't say why, because I could go and see my friend in Lagos. And uh, he it was who took me around the battlefields of Ladysmith. And uh, I began to face uh, what atrocities we British had performed there. It was quite a shock to me. I'd been aware of Ireland before, but not with the intensity of uh, the uh, the first-hand knowledge I saw when I was in Ladysmith. And um, what was most evocative to me, in retrospect, is that scattered over the copies, they call hills their copies, uh, were lone iron crosses, and on it would be engraved to a grey British soldier. And I asked the proper question to myself, what the hell were British soldiers buried on these? Of course, what I now know, it was Britain's extraordinary greed for money. That's why they died. No other reason. Power came into it. It's uh, the same reason that we were in our good cameraman's country, India. Uh, greed for money. I now boil it down to what St. Paul said, uh, love of money is the root to all evil. And that's true. They talk about the railways here just now, and their inadequacies. I am known that British businessmen, 95% of them, and the shareholders, would kill for money if they could be promised, or that it wouldn't be allowed even to enter their consciousness. Human beings most will do anything for money. 
So uh, it made a big impression upon me being on these battlefields and then beginning to inquire, being told by Peter Strong, that was my friend's name, he's dead now, he died quite young. Um, he showed me, he had an opinion. I think he was a little disappointed that I didn't show more obvious interest, but I had a very deep interest, as I've just made clear. Uh, and then I began to read, and uh, I began to collect letters from the Boer War. But there's a purely, um, purely um, uh, collecting aspect to it. Uh, uh, because most of the letters here, and there are about 30,000 in this room, five. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it's the postal markings of the war. I'm making a study, all this written stuff, I've written hundreds of thousands of words about it. Now, that isn't for, you know, I'm better spent attacking the spirit of Britain over our and over its imperial mentality that thank God it's getting rid of now. Uh, I, that's time better spent, but this is occupational therapy. It, um, when I was very ill a year ago, in great pain, mental pain because of the physical pain, this gave me relief because at three or four o'clock in the morning I could come up here and somehow the interest of what I'm researching overwhelmed my pain for up to two hours. Uh, and it's a wonderful gift to be given to be interested, deep interested in a subject. And I began to collect them. Today, this in this room, the director of the uh, Africana Museum in Johannesburg uh, and people from the Army Museum in South Africa, the director of our National Army Museum <laughs> will all tell you that this is the most comprehensive library on the Second Anglo Boer War that exists anywhere in the world. Uh, and so I don't have to go anywhere. I've got it all here. It's all in order, believe it or not. Uh, sometimes I lose things and can't find them. And those piles there are, uh, are full of uh, these enormous quantity of uh, envelopes from to the Boer War for a study of whatever was on those envelopes. Yes, I've understand you're working on an encyclopedia. Well, that's what I'm doing. Postal history. Oh, that war, well, yeah. Well, but, uh, you, you know, I'm well aware that there might be 400 to 500 people around the world who will be interested in it. No more. Mm -hmm. Because it's very specialized, very detailed. Oh. That's you, why. Are you anywhere near completing it? No, impossible. Mm -hmm. Impossible. I seem to have a delusion when I was first started in about 1954 that I was immortal. Time was not a problem. I'm very well aware now that I'm, I hurry, I know I mustn't hurry, but I try to finish it. A section of it, the Natal campaign, were two separate campaigns. One we called our soldiers the South African Field Force, and then over into Africa um, to the east was the Natal campaign. I, I'm having a go to finish the Natal campaign and I might finish that. But I need another 50 years to do the whole thing. I ain't going to get it. I was 79 the other day. Work on you. Yes, I had a very interesting experience. I traveled to Scotland on my birthday. And uh, my instinct, if I buy a newspaper, which I try and avoid, it takes up too much time, I listen to the news. And I bought the Times. I don't know why I did it. I 
کہیں گے کیا نہیں 